wave was about creating existence-based consciousness. And the timing of the Big Bang is, according to a scientist, 13.7 billion years ago. And that's exactly the moment when germination started. So you could say the Big Bang was the moment of germination. Because according to the Mayas, the real start was 16.4 billion years ago. A little bit further back in time. At the end, we got living cells. They had, of course, existence consciousness. When we try to kill a cell, try to destroy it, it will defend itself. Because it has consciousness of existence. It wants to survive. It wants to continue to exist. It's all based in the, all happened in the first uh, wave of creation. In this period of the seventh wave, we find the second wave of creation. And it was about creating instinct-based consciousness. When we look at how a fish, a school of fish, responds to an attacking shark, we see that they all move in the same way, very synchronized. And indeed, the first fish arrived on this planet about 550, uh, <laughs> well, in this time frame, yeah, more than 500 million years ago. And in this period, during about 200 million years, the dinosaurs ruled on this planet based on their instinct. They didn't have emotion or anything else. They were instinct animals. And when they disappeared, the mammals took over. That was necessary because the, the dinosaurs were not able to evolve to a higher consciousness, but the mammals could. And especially the apes. There's a big difference between the apes and the monkeys. Monkeys live in an anonymous herd, while apes live in a family. They still have a tail, they don't have a tail anymore. But most importantly, apes have a bigger brain because the limbic system has developed within the apes creating the sense for the, the possibility of having emotions and responding individually. And again, the apes, the first ape, arrived in this period, about 27 million years ago, exactly according to schedule. Now we look at the arrival of the Homo sapiens. And that is a bit of a long story, I'm not going to tell you everything. Um, but it is totally impossible that the Homo sapiens evolved from the Homo erectus without any help, so to say, from out of this planet. Yeah, the scientist talks about missing link, but that is non-science. That's not a scientific theory because it's totally impossible if you look at the DNA structure of humans compared to the apes, uh, to, the <laughs> to the Homo erectus. On the clay tablets found in Sumeria, Zacharia Sitchin translated it, and he found the story of the Anunnaki, Creatures coming from outer space, transforming Homo erectus into Homo sapiens, genetically manipulating the creatures they found on Earth. And you could say the Neanderthal was version 1.0. They were not too happy about it because they were not as obedient as human beings are, as Homo sapiens are. The fifth wave, we hardly know anything about it because... Yeah, I think there were so many books burned in the past that we have no recordings of, of this period. Plato was the only one who talked about, who wrote about Atlantis. So we hardly know anything about it. I see a clear connection between the precession cycle, where Mother Earth is sleeping or awake, according to where this axis is tilted towards, and the creational cycle. And when we combine them, we see three periods where there have been civilizations on this planet. First we had Lemuria, and then twice a period of Atlantis. At the end of the first period of Atlantis, we created the Sphinx, the big lion. And at the end of the second one, we created the Great Pyramid on the Plateau of Gizeh, according to my interpretation. There's a lot of evidence supporting this, by the way. But in fact, we hardly know anything about this period, because it has not been written down. Written history starts at the sixth wave of creation, starting about 300, 3,000 years before Christ. Here again we see the precession cycle, and on top we see the creational cycle. And what happened is we, create, we created norms with our left hemisphere. And the first norms, you could say, were the Ten Commandments Moses brought down from the Mount Sinai. 
And on based of these norms telling us what is good and what is not good, what is bad, we created religion and we created uh, nations, countries and, and uh, legislation. All happened in this period. The seventh wave, we created power consciousness, power that is above the law. And the first openly, uh, group openly standing above the law was the Illuminati, literally meaning people of the light. But to me, they are not actually people of the light. They mock with the light and they openly support the darkness. They openly worship the darkness. And they're very proud of what they did because it's all visible on the backside of one US dollar bill. And this group financed both world wars. All details you can find on the internet, because war is an excellent way to make more money and to create more power. And they assassinated a lot of people, all according to their own agenda. And in this period, a national ego, uh, I mean an international, uh, a planetary ego arose. Now we go to the eighth wave. We're now here, the seventh. And this is about creating strength-based consciousness. The aim of this eighth wave is that humanity is jumping from ego to intuition, from power-based consciousness to strength-based consciousness. And to make sure that didn't happen, the Illuminati planned very carefully 9-11. Because at the second day, the day of germination, when this new consciousness was able, should have germinated, they created the 9-11 incident. So the timing is exactly right, because this is exactly at the start of the first day. 9-11 is the absolute masterpiece of the Illuminati. Not just by what they did, but also by the timing. And because of this timing, I think that the end date of the Mayan calendar has to be July 14, 2012. There are many more attacks after 9-11, because the terror of this group continues. It still continues even today. Yeah, Japan was an attack, but these attacks were with high technology, uh, with bombs, mostly bombs. But they also have HARP, H-A-A-R-P, technology uh, that can manipulate weather or can create earthquakes. It's still going on, and I have, there's a lot of evidence that the Arab uprising is not a real uprising, but it's also created by the Illuminati to seize control over the oil of Libya, for instance. Then from November 24 of this year, we will enter the ninth wave. That is for people who have already jumped to the level of strength-based consciousness. All other people will remain at the power level, if they want that. And humans will rise themselves up to the level of the gods. That's what the word apotheosis means. Rise yourself up to the level of the gods, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to understand that every human being is a god in itself, because we can create. If we understand the process of creation, we can create. And that is what, is what we are going to rediscover again. <laughs>